from Vienna. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel, Making It in Austria. I'm your host, Adela Mejjanic. I'm Bosnian uh, who lives in Austria, has Austrian citizenship. Uh, it's been, this year will be 10 years of our life in, in Austria. And I am very happy to have a new guest today, Juan Guerra from Venezuela uh, with us today. And warm welcome to you, Juan. Thank you very much for having me. Hello, everybody. Yeah. This is a very, very special episode, and you will you will see why. One of the reasons I I wanted to have one for a very, very long time in our YouTube channel because I interviewed his wife as well, Viliana. Hi, uh, <laughs> if you, I, I know you're watching, so I hope to see you soon in person. But Juan, thank you so much for joining uh, to this channel. Uh, for the first guest from Venezuela. So, or when, from Venezuela's roots, origins. So I'm really, really happy to have you. And one of the uh, guests that coming from the startup scene. So I'm uh, there's many, many things that we can talk about in, in this call. But let's start with your uh, introduction. So who is Juan? What are you doing during the day? So what keeps you busy? Yeah, so I am originally from Venezuela, born and raised, and then I moved to the U.S. with my family back in 2003 for about six years. That's where I did my studies, my bachelor's, and uh, already living there, I knew I wanted to live in Europe. Um, I felt that that was my calling and that's something I needed to do by myself because I moved to U.S. with my family, and so uh, I set up everything I could and make the story short, I made it here. And it's been now 12 years. And so it's been a while. I am already an Austrian citizen. I'm married. I'm settled here. And I'm an entrepreneur. So I run a business that does production for conferences like streaming, broadcast the conferences online. I, I got into this field back in 2016 already with mm -hmm. Facebook Live. And then it went from there with partnerships and, and building it up, the business with the team and so on. But um, what I do on the other side is that I work a lot with entrepreneurs, helping them communicate their business. And more importantly, now I'm focusing on self-employed and mainly expats mm -hmm. that are providing a service and they get to that level where they feel stuck. They feel mm -hmm. overwhelmed. They feel limited by capacity. They start losing business because they just cannot handle it or um, are, are feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And I help them productize their service so that now they can scale it. They can put in a team in place, get their time back, scale it, and then increase their income and have the business run without them. And so that's what I've been working on over the last year. Um, I have put together a program and now I'm starting to get people through it and helping them with their businesses. So that's, that's you could say, is my focus. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I will definitely link all your, you know, the LinkedIn and and uh, the website. This reminded me a little bit of this book from Tim Ferriss, Four Days. Four Hour week. Work Week. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I read it some time ago. It was also recommended uh, by one of the entrepreneurs I know and I interviewed on this channel, Sam, mm -hmm. uh, the Iranian who made it in, in Austria, also in business and, and uh, marketing. And he told me about that book. It's it's changes and it challenges limited, limiting beliefs uh, about the way we see work and how we can set up things to earn money. Because especially when we are employees, when we shift to earning money by ourselves, we're bringing a lot of those that mindset and those ideas into our own practice. And the reality is that we are we need to shift the way that we see how we create money because we see it from the eyes of a salary or like trading our time for that money. But eventually that has a cap and it has a limitation. And it's not the same when you earn a salary and then this is what you need. You focus on a task that when you are running everything by yourself, you have so many things to do that you need to earn more because all the taxes and all these different things that you have to cover. And so that that's why that book is so, so impactful for many people because it helped them see what they need to be doing as self-employed as running a business in a completely different light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I picked up was also about this virtual assistant. I read mm. that book many, many years ago. Uh, for me, it was a new thing. I, I know that everybody's picking up on this uh, at the moment and there are different platforms, but that was definitely something to, that I looked 
path mm-hmm. where you can okay create the process and and uh, have it someone do these things for you yeah i actually at one point i had somebody in the philippines helping me out um and and the idea came also from the book because uh, I've been on this journey trying to learn how to productize services for a while. And, and and I experimented, yeah, having people in the Philippines, creating a concept, selling it here, and then editing there. And so um, I no longer work on that, but I do have a virtual assistant in Europe. So, cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so Juan, this is a channel about people moving this, or thinking about moving abroad, specifically to Austria, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And... So how was your start in Austria? So was it all, you know, milk and honey uh, when you landed or was it was it a bumpy road or how was it for you coming to 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 Austria? Yeah. Um, extremely challenging, I have to say, to the point where it's almost traumatizing uh, if I ever move again and have to start all over again, um, mm. mainly because uh, not being a EU citizen and not speaking German. Now, um, when I was in the US, I made my decision to move here. And doing my research, I realized, okay, maybe it's better if I try to move there as a student than as an employee, because then I can be people with my in my age and I can have a bit of the experience of student life in Europe and so on. And so when I moved here, yeah, that, was, that, that worked out. But then there were certain constraints. I really thought I could just come here. Um, I could get a part-time job and then I would get enough money to get things going and while well, I finish my studies. And what I didn't realize is that, yeah, it's definitely quite challenging because then obviously I didn't realize the time that it takes to figure out how the system works. Um, and that's a big, you know, I think that when you move somewhere else, you start sort of like a negative actually mm-hmm. where you need to ma- you need to build your way up to ground zero so that then you can start getting results and the two things are not understanding how the system works and the other one is the lack of a network i mean in in venezuela i can write a couple of text messages and reach wherever i would like to and here i just don't don't have access to that and so that's one thing and then understanding how the system works if you're not hanging out with locals then it takes even longer, which is my case. I mean, my life is in English. My wife is from Bulgaria. Um, I work in English. I'm in the startup scene, which is very international. And it's sort of like a, a, a parallel bubble to everything else that happens here, which is great because it's it's a bubble big enough for you to earn. But I came in 2011. I joined startup scene in 2014. So what happens in those first three years? It's figuring out how how you can get things going. So... Yeah, uh, I moved here with my savings. So I had savings from the US and that's what got me going. Um, At the time, I think my father managed to send me some money a couple of times, but that's obviously not a a strategy you can depend on. Um, And then, yeah, it got tough. It got tough to a point where I had to move out. I couldn't afford rent. I was three months behind. Um, I even consider donating plasma to get some cash for food at some point. Um, and I think this is where your your ego hits gets hit very hard because here I am like, okay, I have a bachelor's from the US in business and I don't know how to earn a single euro. The biggest thing was to get a, a work permit. That's the biggest thing. So being able to find a company that decides to hire you. So you need to really go through that process and showcase that you're allowed to work. So when you have a student visa, if you're in a master's program, you can work up to 20 hours. Um, Back in the day, bachelor's was up to 10. But Mm. now, I I mean, I remember it was 20 hours. And so normally the proper like jobs that will give you experience to build a career, they ask for full time. And then they also want native native speaker. Um, And many of them, they just don't want to deal with the bureaucracy of having to show to the government that they need you when they can choose any of the 500 million European citizens. And so, and then if you manage to find somebody, okay, good. You cannot start until it gets approved in six weeks and they also need to pay it. And so it just stacks up everything. But I noticed that if you wanted to start your own business and be self-employed, there is no regulation on that. 
And so you could immediately start working. You could immediately just get everything set up. As long as you comply with the needs for your student visa and you comply with what is required from a self-employed person, it's a, you got a green light. And so that's what I did. Okay. So you could be as a bachelor or master student on a visa and you could open, a, I don't know. So a student visa. You need oh, to have a student visa. Okay. Um, and then to become self-employed, you do need to show some uh, preparation. So I remember I had to show my bachelor's in business. Mm -hmm. And that was that got me approved to be able to go and become self-employed. Um, and do you have the limits when it comes to, to how much uh, you can earn? So you can earn 100,000, half a million? Yeah, okay. exactly. So depending, I mean, this is not legal advice. I don't know how it is now. And so everybody should do the research, but this is how it was for me. Um, so you have in Austria what is called a uh, getting few gig yep. tournament. So it's like the minimum, minimum, minimum that you're like, okay, I'm not going to earn more than 4,000 something this year. And so you can have that and that's where you're limited. Okay, mm -hmm. so there you pay very little for insurance and so on. Now, if you know you're going to earn more than that, then it comes the next threshold that is up to like 35,000. And up to that level, you can sell, you can do whatever you want. And the difference is that you still don't charge your company, your clients, VIT, sales tax. Once you go over the 35K in a year, you need to start collecting VIT. And so then the accounting and bookkeeping gets a bit more complicated because then you also need to pay these taxes every three months and mm -hmm. so on. But uh, at the time I registered for the one in between. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, I remember that I had to renew my student visa. Then the following year, they asked me for certified tax, like uh, that an accountant did my bookkeeping, that I had filed my taxes. I normally had to renew my visa in, in March. And so I opened in July the year before. So for the last six months, I, I submitted everything. I got my visa extended. I showed that I had my credits in the university. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You see, they are, they are always, that's why it's important to know people. So people, among people who talk to people, the shortcuts. Yeah. Or you have to dig it on your own. And some of things are in German. If you don't speak it. Well, I mean... You know, that's those are the rules of the game that you need to figure out. <laughs> and so that's why you came here. <laughs> to prove yourself once again. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, Juan, uh, you mentioned yes. things like what other people as well, you know, shared, you know, the, the, the network, the language, you know, the system. I, I just this week I met one great uh a lady that moved also to Austria and then we talked about you know start finding a job so it's uh, in in Austria and for me for you you know knowing the system for me was knowing the market mm -hmm. when I came here I had my master's uh, in telecommunications I had years of experience but I didn't know the language right mm -hmm. I didn't have the network so I didn't understand the, very well the job market you know um, I would follow you know career punctate I would go there and I would look what is coming up I knew some companies like the international companies but not you know the, not every company and not small and medium companies in, in Austria so that was very blurry for me so basically where, where I spent most of my time ori was orientating here so realizing okay so I have this and how does that fit to to what is on the market, right? So where mm -hmm. do I fit? Because, you know, if I go and look for in the technical branch, then they ask for like many, many things and they put people with the, you know, a faculty degree, a, a people who did, you know, high technical school. So for me, it was like overwhelming. So, you know, as, as well. So I spent most of my time realizing, okay, how do I match this? And so that I can get the work permit, uh, right? And that I enter, can enter the uh, the environment, the work environment, the company, and then I can show what I can, right? So as you said, you don't start where you were. So if I had a, a leading position, team leader position, so honestly, I didn't count with it that I will get it here. And this is the experience for all the people that I have interviewed. As you said, zero or minus one. So you have to really you know, build up your way up. Um, but once you're in, that was my experience. So I, I had the crazy luck that the company Tele2 back then said, yeah, we will sponsor your visa. We did it some time ago. 
it shouldn't be a problem. You know, they, they were like nice. very, you know, optimistic, nice. enthusiastic about it. They said, we will support you. We will, you know, we will write things like knowing the Croatian language is important because Tele2 Croatian had the operations there. So they were really trying to, to put all the important things. So why yeah. me? Right. And supporting me in learning the language and getting like the, the start. And for me, the start back then was the trainee position. Mm -hmm. which I realized here is paid, right? So you get a full-time contract, you get, you have a, a decent salary, you know, with the collective agreement and based on your experiences. So I was, I, w I had a really, really, you know, good, good start once, uh, you know, I figured out where, because I stopped applying for, you know, positions, team leading and, and where they ex like so many things and I would just be overwhelmed and said, you know, I want to get in. I want to show what I can, and then I'm sure I'm certain that it, uh, you know, it will be noticed. Basically, I can I can work my way up. Yeah, that, so in general, what I've seen is that it's all about that first job. You know, it's it's the same as it, it's the same thing happening at home when you graduate and everybody wants experience to give you a job, and then you're trying to get your first job. Yeah. Um, in here, it's a bit of the same. They nobody wants to be the first company to hire you here. Um, but already, if they see that somebody else has hired you before, then they're willing to take the risk. And so finding that first that first company, a lot of the time, obviously, then, you know, they, they feel they're taking a risk on you. And therefore, mm -hmm. they want to pay you less or they give you a, a smaller position or, mm -hmm. you know, um, you don't get the same that you have at home. You, you're relaunching your life and reinventing yourself. And so I just... My challenge is I also don't want to create that belief that this is the way, like, because sometimes we get to achieve more when we don't know. And so I don't, I, 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 I don't want somebody to move somewhere with a preconceived notion, expecting less because you should strive for more. Obviously, then you can go faster. Um, but if that's not the case, you should not connect this with your self-worth, because I think that this is, this is the biggest challenge that we have is that you feel the pain of rejection over and over and over. Um, and so you start doubting and you start believing that you're worth less than you really are. And it's not true. I mean, also, I think this is something that you learn as an entrepreneur because many there can be months where I earn nothing, right? And there are months that we do really good. And so I, need, I needed to learn that this has nothing to do with my self-worth. And it's more about figuring out a way to monetize your skills whether it is in a job or it is through selling services and so on. Mm. Yeah. That's a really yeah. good point, Juan. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a good point. And I have people who've been CEOs and business owners in their own country coming here, not getting even a job at McDonald's. Yeah. You know, and as you said... It, I was rejected at Bapiano. <laughs> and I had... Which is a pizza restaurant, like almost fast food. Like, so now, now the motivational, you know, the team would be if you get rejected, you are redirected to your path, you know. And I'm path. glad, yeah. Obviously, at the moment, quote. <laughs> yeah. And at the moment, you're like, oh my god, I'm not even good to make pizza, like. <laughs> but, but no, it has nothing to do with you. It, it's just you're, you're just trying to figure out the system, and it takes time. It's yes. not that you're worthless. It's just that it takes time to figure out how to match your skills with a way that um they 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 help somebody make money here yeah mm -hmm. that's ab absolutely true um one how about this uh, network so how did you build up your network you came you said 2011 yeah. the first uh, job in the in the startup scene was 2014 right yeah. then did you started building there or before during the studies while you were chasing the your you know your first yeah. customers so in the beginning, uh, so I came from my studies. I figured that that would be the easiest way to meet people. Um, and I also wanted to have a student life in Europe and see what that was like. And, but at the time, I joined an organization called ISEC. Uh, and that became my family. There was a lot of international students there. And these are really proactive people that are trying to develop their leadership skills, develop their trainings, their communication skills, team leadership, and so on. Uh, and there I came across public speaking. I fell in love with public speaking. I started hosting conferences. I started actually traveling. So I've been to over 
almost 15 countries. I've been to Bosnia and Herzegovina, so actually near, near Mostar. Um, where's this uh the the Virgin? Like there is some place that people go to. Medjugorje. Yeah, so I've been nearby there hosting a conference. And then at the same time, I've been in Tel Aviv. I've been to Iran. I've been to Georgia, to Tbilisi. Like, it's been incredible. And this also helped me learn not only to dominate the stage, but also adapt my message to different cultures. And once I finished my time there, I that's when I came into the startup scene and I started hosting startup events. Mm-hmm. And this just accelerated the process of me meeting people because um, this is... This was for me like sort of um, an accelerator in terms of, so you could you could go to events and try to network. You could, you could be part of the organizing team because then now you have sort of like an excuse to meet people and, and you have a reason to meet more people. But if you are on the stage, then everybody knows you and it gives you an authority position. Uh, it gives you an expertise or, or, or sort of, Later, when I started my business, there has been so many times where I go to somebody and like, yeah, well, this is what we're doing. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who you are. Like, you did this, this and that. Um, or if I ask, you know, from the stage, I say, hey, if you want to connect with me, here's my LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, there's a bunch of requests. And then it accelerates the process. It opens a lot of doors. And so that was something that really helped me. And that's what I tell people whenever I meet somebody that moves here, um, just find a way that you can build your network as fast as possible. I've, you know, 90% of the jobs in general are filled by people that they know each other. And so within network, so 90% of the jobs get filled before they get published. And so imagine, um, and there's so many, for example, I've met so many Austrians that you ask them, man, how much you pay for rent? And it's like, ah, oh, like 800 euros. And like, oh my God. And it's like, yeah, it's a 200 square meter apartment in the center. And like, how do you get that? Well, my granny had this contract from the eighties. And yes. so there's just so many things that we just don't know. And therefore we don't have access to. And I, there's like ignorance tax. And so we just don't know what we don't know and we therefore end up paying more. And so the faster we can eliminate that that gap, the faster that we can get there um, and, and know the things that we don't know, then we can have a simpler life <laughs> and cheaper life. Same in our in our in our building where, when because I spoke with some of neighbors who are here the whole life. Some of them were born here, so they're forty plus, and they were like t- telling me how much they were paying back it's in painful. the days of shillings. It's that painful. Like, oh, oh, cheap. My, oh, cheap. So and the location and everything and so yeah. But I, I am comforting one myself with like we are now here, so it will be easier for our children, right? So yeah. some. As you said, they they is price to pay to everything, right? And the decision mm-hmm. that we made back then, back day then was to move here to try something new out. We gave out, we come with some, we came with a little bit of a budget. We said we'll give it a try, and with all that crazy energy. And then I like when I'm thinking back, like there was no obstacles, right? There were of course a lot of fears and doubts, and you're like, oh, why I go to this career event? I have to present myself. I have to go from one booth to another. That's really painful, you know. You mm-hmm. you are I'm talking to you, and then you said, no, I don't have a job, and there's nothing, and there's blah this and that, and then you have to you know take that in and go to the next one and say, yeah, hi, how are you? Yes, I'm looking for a job, and all these things that we've have to do in a very short period of time right you, you have to be on yeah. fast on your feet in a very very short time because financially as well and it's and- a very precarious situation yes. and so and and you start getting desperate and and then that starts showing up and so then people start pushing you away because nobody wants to surround themselves with somebody that is negative that yep. it's angry that is frustrated that yep. is uh needy like it's and it's just a spiral, uh, downward spiral, and so it, it gets it gets really challenging. For me, for example, so uh, for the uni- back in the day for the student visa, you needed to have about twelve k in cash mm-hmm. in an Austrian bank account. Yep. Have an Austrian bank account. You need a local address and you need to be registered. Yes. To be registered, you need to have a local contract and be living here with a visa. And so immediately there was a there's no way that the cycle can be completed. Mm-hmm. And I, it got to the point where, so I couldn't move directly from the U.S. to Austria. I had to go to Venezuela for about a year and a half while I get everything set up. 
And it got to the point where, okay, I, I am stuck because I cannot get an apartment contract because who's going to rent me an apartment if I'm all the way in Venezuela? I didn't understand the whole concept of the guests and, and sharing yeah. flats and like, yeah. you know, there's a whole an interview process and they want to make sure yeah. that you're a good fit. Like, I don't know anything of that. And, and nobody's going to hire somebody or give them a, a flat to if you're not even here. Yeah. And so I had to fly to Vienna and I had two goals. I need to leave Austria back to Venezuela. I came for a month with an apartment contract and an, a, and an Austrian bank account so I can put the money in so I can apply for a visa. So as a Venezuelan, I could come for three months as a tourist mm -hmm. without a visa, but then obviously I needed the visa to be able to stay. And I managed to find an apartment contract, but then I couldn't find any bank that would open me a, a bank account because I didn't have a method set because I wasn't living here. I was just a, 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 And so that was a bottleneck. And because I used to work in a bank in the U.S., I remember seeing that outside of the Vienna Univin, the, the main university uh, in the ring, mm -hmm. there was a, like a campaign from Erste Bank that they were opening accounts for students. And I remember and I figured that if they have that campaign, they're probably going to open an account for anybody because that's yeah. the goal. Yeah. And so I, in my last week, I had like four days left before traveling back to Venezuela. I mean, it would have made the whole trip a failure. I, I, I wouldn't have been able yep. to apply. And so I remember I went there and I told him, um, yeah, I'm a student. I already have the student confirmation. Uh, I just don't live here. I need to move back because I came. I made up, I don't know, a whole story. And in the end, they opened me the account. Okay. I managed to get a friend, uh, an Austrian friend that they really helped me. They allowed me to use their address for, yeah. for, for yeah. the bank account. So I put that address. And then my friend managed to go to the bank. And obviously they couldn't share information with him because he's yeah. not me, but all I needed was a bank account number. And yeah. I believe that what they shared with me was my bank account. And I just went ahead and transferred like 14 K uh, that I, all my savings, I transferred into that bank account, hoping that this was my bank account. Uh, and then two weeks later, I sent another email like, please, can you send me a bank statement? uh from my bank account like i didn't have access online because i wasn't yeah. here didn't... and so they sent me this bank statement with my name that i'm hoping this is true and that's what i put in my application and then in the end uh i didn't manage to get it on time so i had to fly here and then within a week i got everything straightened out i remember going to the magistrat here for immigration and yeah. i saw exactly the folders the papers that i sent all the way from venezuela um, I went to the bank and it's like, hey, it's me. Like, is this really you? Like, okay, it's my bank account. Good. Uh, the money's here. And uh, got my insurance uh, all sorted out. And then I, I got my residency for, for one year. And that's it. Like in the beginning, it was one year at a time. Yeah. Year per year. So I did the longest master's in the history of the world, six years, which I still didn't manage to finish because uh, I didn't do my master's thesis. Um, but yeah. I I took two years to learn German, then the program yeah. and so on. Yeah. And then I we, got married. <laughs> and then the master thesis. Well, you know, the plan was only to come for four years. So my really? plan, yeah, because I, I'm from Venezuela. I studied business in the US. I love cultures. I wanted I always wanted to be in international business. And the idea was to come to Austria, do a master's, have the European experience, and then go to Shanghai. I wanted to be here for yeah. four years, go to okay. Shanghai for six months to one year. And then I didn't know, like, then we will see where life takes me from there. But, well, life took me, Besides. took me to meet a beautiful Bulgarian lady. And uh, now it's been 10 years and we have two kids and we live here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's life. <laughs> Great story, Johan. Uh, yeah. I remember we got our mail that set to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was when we decided to go to Vienna so when we had this in mind okay it's clear we are going we got there also accepted from the university and then I was like well where do we live and the the only thing that I I what came to my mind was asking people because you know there's a lot of Bosnian people here so that the community is huge so I contacted everyone that I could um through, through Facebook back then, and just like asking and all the pair, all the cousins of a cousin of a cousin, neighbor, and yeah. so on. And one of my like one of my cousins who lives in, in Salzburg, we never met in person. Okay. Uh, so he had a friend here in Vienna who who is also Bosnian, and uh, she said, Okay, I will 
have them registered to my apartment. So it's okay. I will go with them. I will. But it was like after months yeah. of, you know, trying it out and then waiting the last minute, you know, like if this is going to work out or, or not. And then somehow, as you said, life happens in between and some things do connect. Like in general, looking like over the 12 years here, um, there are a couple of things I've seen. And that is the system is designed so that those that really want to be here will make it like it's going to test you yeah this is the system is going to test you if you really want to be here and in the very beginning you can see once the honeymoon phase is finished and the three months pass and you start living life here you immediately can see those that within the next three months are going to go back because they just don't connect like they start missing home and all that stuff um and then those that decide to stick with it and then the testing starts uh to see if you really are cut out like if you're really gonna make sure that you do everything you can to be here so um i don't want to discourage anybody like life here is beautiful no. we love yep. it i mean, i'm super too. happy and i mean number one quality of life in a, in a city in the world I, I mean my life has been i i i love it so it's just that it's not easy uh you gotta earn it and the system will test you and so it's all about are you are you ready for it yeah. But as your message behind you or next to you says, be brave. So, you know, mm -hmm. you got to do it, it, but you got to do it. Exactly. So for us, it came through us, basically from us. It wasn't a decision that someone take has made for us. Like in your case, you had a clear plan in your head. We said we the market in Bosnia is too small for us. Life is uh, started to be relatively small. So we felt we need to go abroad. We wanted to have this abroad experience, right? So you, mm -hmm. as, as you said, you wanted to come to Europe. So we did it on our own. Uh, so basically we decided, made a decision. And then as you said, so, so things start to, when you sh keep showing up, right? Then something starts coming up. So, right? So, dots are connecting and then you realize okay people see okay she's serious about it so it's not just like something let's yeah. give it a try but you keep coming showing up you keep doing your your best you know all day long i was just when we came here meeting people learning the language doing the, you know the, the groundwork applying for jobs going for being rejected going back home applying again learning the language mm. meeting some some people and you put day by day stay work. positive yeah exactly because you, you're not alone. So you're not like, alone. And people you find along the way people that yeah. see potential in you and want to help you. Yeah. But that only is shown when you're consistent and when you go out of your way. And I mean, you gotta be resourceful and and sometimes you're gonna see all the problems in all the solutions, but then you just gotta find a way and ask, how, how can I make this happen? How can we do this? With whom can we talk? What can we do? Um, because we have limiting beliefs that we don't see and it's a different system. And so you got to believe that there are different ways of doing things that you're used to. And so, yeah. yeah. So that's all time we have for, for today. So thank you, Juan, uh, for, am I pronouncing it right? Juan or Juan or Juan, Juan uh, for your time and for everyone. So be nice to yourself, basically. In, in, in this first month, it's really, it's going to test you. Most of us have been tested. It can be really harsh. It can be, you know, overwhelming, but there are people along the way. So making it in Austria is definitely one of the communities that people can rely on. There, everyone went through a similar way and they are all keen on, you know, supporting people coming here, sharing contacts, going for a coffee and chat, listening and so on and so forth. So do reach out. Uh, I will link the contacts of Juan here for this, for LinkedIn, for his uh, page. So I hope you take the opportunity and, and connect with us. Juan, thank yeah. you so much for your time uh, and enjoy a long weekend with the family. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, all the best. Feel free to reach out if you decide to make it here. And I hope I do some public speaking classes with you. I would love that. Yeah, it's awesome. This was a, it's awesome. It, you, this was an amazing interview. So it like your voice and it's it's just <laughs> living proof of his own uh, services and uh, what you're doing. So thank you so much. You found your Thanks. call. Thank Thanks you. everyone. Enjoy the day. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye.